The metaphor I like to give people is I call it the bank of goodwill. Anytime you get into a sales process where you're going to ask someone to part for their money, you are going to be taking a withdrawal on the bank of goodwill, right? That's what a sale is, a withdrawal on that bank of goodwill. And so your content is when you're making deposits into the bank. And so mm -hmm. if you're regularly making deposits into the bank of goodwill with someone, and so you have an, a nice, big, large, positive balance in there, when you do get to the point with someone in your sales process where you're like, hey, I think you'd be a good fit for XYZ service or XYZ product with us, right? Would you like to buy this from us? However your I... offer goes, that withdrawal is withdrawing on a positive balance and not on a lower and negative balance. So mm -hmm. it's much easier to close sales if you've been depositing into that bank of goodwill with your content that makes them trust you with that authority building yeah. content. Welcome to PPP.FM, brought to you by Push Button Podcasts, your go-to resource for grabbing attention, building awareness, and creating authority in your marketplace. I'm Richard Matthews, your host and guide through the wonderful world of podcasting as a driver of business. Here, we teach how to use a multimedia podcast as the cornerstone of your omnipresent content marketing strategy. Whether you're an entrepreneur, podcaster, expert, or thought leader, you'll discover creative ways to leverage your digital content. From blogs to video, from YouTube to TikTok, and everything in between. I'll show you how to stand out from the noise so you can directly connect with potential customers, build strategic partnerships, and drive leads into your business. Get ready for actionable tips and tangible takeaways on improving your digital presence across the board. With that, let's dive into this week's episode of pvp.fm. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Push Button Podcast, or welcome back. Today, I'm here again with Richard Matthews, and we're going to be going over something you called the three A's. You yeah. want to tell me a little more about it? The three A's. Yeah. So last week, if you were tuned into our last episode, we talked about the four B's, which is of lead generation, which was buy, borrow, build, and blitz. And we talked a little bit about in the build category, right? That's what Push Button Podcasts helps businesses do is build an audience of people that you can put your offer in front of. And in that category, we have our second set of, of alliteration, which we call the three A's, right? And the reason you want to build an audience is so you can have these three A's in your business. And we call them awareness, attention, and authority. And so we'll talk a little bit about what those are today and how they impact your business. All righty. Well, I suppose we can jump right into it then. What obviously, I know what the word awareness means, but what does it mean in the context of our three A's? Yeah. So awareness is what makes you visible in the marketplace, right? And so without awareness, your audience doesn't know you exist, right? And so one of the things that we talk about, I've got my notes over here. That's what I'm looking over here for. If you see me looking off, when they go out and start looking for a solution to their problems, right? If someone is like, hey, my air conditioner is not working. Hey, my tooth hurts. Whatever the thing is that your business solves. Hey, I'm hungry and you serve food. If they go out into the marketplace looking for a solution to their problem, and you have to think today going out into the marketplace means pulling up their Google search results. It means pulling up the Facebook local things and you know asking their friends for recommendations. It means going onto TikTok and flipping through and typing in a search term, right? It means going to these social networks, whether or their search networks, and going somewhere online and seeing, you know, do does someone exist that solves a problem that I have? Right. And that's that first level, right? It's just a very baseline, like you have to have awareness to even mm -hmm. show up and play the game. Right. You know, if you're a right. restaurant and you don't have a listing on Yelp, you might as well not exist. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing in every business category today that your content, right, whether that's a, a Yelp listing, your podcast, the content that you're putting up in your Facebook news feed, the stuff that gets indexed by the search engines so that you can show up in the search results. All of that content is what allows you to have awareness in the marketplace. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, that definitely does. So that would definitely apply to our build category from the three B's from last time. Yeah, absolutely. And I like to couch this for people who are in the business world. We talked a little bit about the younger generations, right? Your millennials and now your Gen Z, which is coming into their money spending years, right? They approach business differently than Gen X and the boomer generation. And one of those things that, the, that we do, particularly started with the millennials, is I call it a heartbeat check. Right. And the heartbeat check mm -hmm. is I need to hire someone. I can just use the example of, you know, hiring someone to work on my air conditioner. Right. Because it's summer is hot here and our air conditioners are always <laughs> struggling yes. a little bit here in Florida. Right. right. You got to call your you need to call an AC company. You're going to 
search on Google, see who's around. And then the first thing that you do is you're going to check and see if they have a heartbeat, right? You're going to pull up their Facebook page. You're going to pull up their YouTube, your, whichever ones they list on their webpage, right? You're going to go and check on those things and see, you know, when was the last time they posted any content? And then maybe you'll mm -hmm. engage with that content and watch it or read it or look at it. And if you're comparing two or three different companies to see who you're going to call, you're going to do that process in some order of like looking at the reviews and then looking at their content and seeing who you actually connect with, who you want to do business with. And that heartbeat check is vital because if you'd show up and you're being compared with two other businesses and one of them is posting like once a week and they've been got content every week for a couple of years and you've posted once a year for two years, the other person is absolutely going to get the business from the younger generation every time, right? Mm -hmm. And so that heartbeat check is vital and fits right into this awareness category. Does that make sense? And I'd also love to get sort of your thoughts on that as someone who's in the Gen Z, I'm in the millennial category, right? How does your generation, mm -hmm. do you see the same heartbeat check happening in your generation as well? I do. I do actually 100%. I mean, obviously we're not going and doing things like the AC, the air conditioning too much right yeah. now. I mean, none of us have houses, let's be honest. <laughs> But in most cases, when we are buying something, especially a big purchase, we do tend to check out their social medias. And we, I know, at least for me, and I think I've kind of noticed it with others, there's also kind of a quality check in their content as well to see yeah. if what they're producing is actually good, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And if you go back to our very first couple of episodes on this podcast where we talked about having good enough production quality right? You want the production quality to be good enough that your message isn't missed by your market, right? Because if they show up and you're looking at that content and the content like has physical problems with it, you can't understand the audio, you can't see the video, you mm -hmm. don't care whether or not they are good HVAC repair people, right? Because the unconscious trust signals that they're sending into the marketplace are that level of quality is how they do all of their work. Right. Yeah. And so it's a really important point. And it's one of the reasons why we start with that on the podcast is, you know, you start with that. You want to have that good enough production quality, whether you're writing content or you're creating video podcasts like we talk about. It doesn't matter if you're putting stuff into the marketplace. It needs to be good enough. Right. That your message is. missed. And like I said, it doesn't mean you need to be Hollywood. No one's expecting the local HVAC repair guy to have a Hollywood level videos. Right. And it's just that you show up with good enough stuff. And so that's really important. I also think it dives right into the next sort of A, right? Which is the mm -hmm. attention, right? And attention is what makes them listen to you, right? So if awareness just lets them know that you exist, that you can solve the problem, right? Then the next one is attention. And one of my favorite business owners that I follow regularly, his name is Ryan Dice. He's the uh, CEO of uh, marketer.com, I believe, or marketing. I can't remember what it is. But anyways, he's real big in the uh, marketing space. And he talks about every business is in the attention business today, right? It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what you sell. It could be barbecues. It could be, you know, podcast services like we sell. It could be just literally anything that you sell. The first business that you're in is in the attention business. So what you have to do is you have to go into the busy marketplace and you have to grab your audience by their eyeballs and get them to pay attention to your offers, right? Because it doesn't matter how good your stuff is. If you can't get the attention of your audience, it doesn't really matter, right? So you're dead in the water. Mm -hmm. And so what we like to talk about with Push Button Podcasts is you want that content to be branded and you want it to be memorable. And it, the other part of that, so branded memorable, and then the other part of that is that it shows up where they are when they need it, right? Mm -hmm. And so where they are when they need it means you are, you know, I'm just going to use my wife, for example. She scrolls TikTok every night before bed, right? And she's looking for you know, entertainment or whatever, but then something scrolls across her feed that's like, oh, that's one of the problems that, you know, I've been trying to solve, right? In her case, it'd be like homeschooling stuff for her kids, right? Things yeah. that are, are popping up and they'll be like, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe that's something I could use, right? Check out a little bit more, right? It shows up where they are when they need it and in a branded memorable way. And that is essentially how you get someone's attention is by being where they are when they need you to be there. And ties right back into that heartbeat check of having mm -hmm. regular content because not your entire, and we talked about this in the bees too, right? In the build category, that uh, buyer's journey, right? Not everyone is ready to buy now. So mm -hmm. you are putting content out regularly. So when they do become aware that they have a problem, you're there, 
right? You're in their feeds. You're, you know, you're on their right. podcast queue. You know, you're in their Facebook news feed. You're in the Google search results. I mean, your content is showing up where they are and it's showing up in that branded memorable way. I want to give a quick example of branded too, right? One of my close friends, he runs a company called Real Estate Growth Hackers. And so he talks to real estate agents about doing lead generation online. And every single one of his educational courses is called something, something machine, right? So it's lead generation machine, business card machine, right? You know, open house machine. I don't know. I'm probably butchering all of his names, but if you look him up, you can see his stuff. All of the things, they have like a machine on there and they all use sort of the same color and brand style guides. And they use the same sort of like glitch logo that he's got through his stuff. And so when you see his content, even if you've never paid attention to it, you know, it's his, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're like, oh, that's Zach, right? That's Zach Hammer from Real Estate Growth Hackers. I'm not paying attention to it until you do, right? Until you become aware that you have that problem. Right. But that branded memorable way means that you know his stuff, right? And if you're watching this podcast, you probably notice that we have a little animated, the PVP, right? He's got little animated eyeballs mm -hmm. on it. And that shows up at the beginning of all of our clips and the end of all of our clips. And it's just a little branded thing. Even if you don't watch our clips, you'll see that little animated logo and be like, oh, there's PVP talking again, right? You'll see us. So our content is associated with our brand, right? And you'll mm -hmm. probably notice I even go so far as I only have two shirts that I wear on my content. I have this red one here and then sitting next to my desk in my studio, I have the black one that you'll see me wear on some of these things because it's part of my uniform, right? That I show up with so that when you see me, you're like, oh, I know him, right? I know what he looks mm -hmm. like. You rec probably recognize my American flag background. I don't change that very often. I've changed it like twice in the last couple of years. We are talking about getting branded push button podcast backdrop. So maybe you'll see us change in a little while. But the idea is it's branded in the way that we dress. It's branded, branded in the way that we light ourselves. It's branded in the way we mm -hmm. use the logos and the color graphics so that we get the impression volume over the course of time. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Only thing I'd ask if you'd want to go into a little more depth on that impression value and what that means in case. Yeah, yeah. Anybody so, has to if you've ever done any research on how long it takes someone to buy, and I haven't done this, mm -hmm. but Google has, I mean, you can actually look mm -hmm. up their studies on this. It takes an average of seven contacts for someone before they'll even consider buying. And it's They've got a uh, another one that's that shows the amount of time they have to spend with you during those contacts. And it's significant, right? It's anywhere from like 45 minutes to three hours plus interacting with your content before they're, they're comfortable enough to buy from you, right? And so that impression volume is every time someone sees you and you have essentially, I call it like a mental hook, right? It's like in the closet mm -hmm. of their brain. They're like, okay, there's push button podcasts. And every time they see push button podcasts, you're like, this piece of content gets on that hook, right? It gets on that hook. And right. when you fill that hook up, now you've like satisfied that like, okay, I know this brand enough. They show up consistently enough. They show up long-term enough that if I do have the problem that they solve, or I run into mm -hmm. someone who has the problem that they solve, I might refer them or I might call them, right? That kind of thing. Does that make right. sense? How impression yeah, that makes stacks sense. up and builds sure. up over time. For sure. So thank you for explaining that. Are you ready to amplify your influence and stand out from the noise? Join Richard Matthews on pbp.fm as he explores the power of podcasting, social media, and strategic content to boost your reach. You'll discover the latest trends in video, audio, and influencer marketing, plus unlock insider tips to create binge-worthy content spotlighting you as a leader. With upbeat energy and clear, empowering advice, Richard guides publishers, experts, and entrepreneurs on starting a podcast, improving social strategy, and connecting with your perfect audience. Visit pbp.fm and book a podcast strategy session to start spreading your message today. So what exactly would our last A be? So our last one is authority, right? And the authority is what your content actually does when they engage with it, right? So we talked about awareness, that's showing up in all the right places, and attention, which is having that branded memorable stuff, meaning that you're showing up in their feeds when they need you. Authority is now someone's engaging with your content, right? They're like, okay, mm -hmm. I want to start a podcast. Let's listen to this pbp.fm podcast and see if they can actually teach me a thing or two, right? Let's engage with this HVAC guy's Facebook posts and see if he actually knows what he's talking about, right? And authority is what makes your audience trust you, right? This is where mm -hmm. you deliver the goods. So you've earned their attention. Now it's time that you have to earn their trust, 
right? And if you don't earn their trust, then essentially you've gone bust at this point. So like if you don't mm -hmm. actually know how to help someone solve their problem, they're never going to call you, right? They're never going to get into your right. sales funnel. And so this is where you have to make sure your content hits one of our, we'll talk about this probably in another episode, one of the three E's, right? And that's entertainment, education, or empowerment, right? And so, you know, ideally hit all three of those things where your content is actually helping to educate someone, you're educating them in an entertaining way, and you're empowering them to leave your content and go actually do something with it, right? And that's hopefully what we're doing here with our podcast is giving you enough information that whether or not you ever hired us, you could go out and successfully build a podcast, right? We're empowering you right. to do that. And it's such an important thing and you don't get many shots at it, right? So if you've managed to get their awareness and you've managed to get their attention long enough to, you know, click onto one of your videos or to read one of your blog posts or to engage with you in some way and they go through and they read that content and they're like, oh, well, that was garbage, right? Mm -hmm. If it was hot garbage, guess what every single impression volume is going to do in their head? Now that little hook in their brain says pbp.fm is hot garbage. And every time I see them, they just go right onto that hot garbage hook, right? right. And so... It's really important that when you create content, you create content that delivers the goods, mm -hmm. right? that hits one of those right. three things, the entertaining, educational, or empowering, again, ideally all three. And I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this part in particular, because I know the quality of content has such a huge impact on how mm -hmm. people perceive your business. Right. And it definitely does. And I think like you said, it's not just, you know, the video quality or the audio quality. There's plenty of people out there that have great audio and video quality that aren't actually producing anything worthwhile. And I know at least my generation also kind of looks for that content that it you're also providing me with something than just a visual audio. You're providing me with some sort of knowledge or entertainment, like you said. So, yeah. And it will stick in our minds if it's not great. Yeah. And it's interesting, right? So I tend to lean a little heavier on the education side because I don't find myself particularly entertaining. But if we could figure <laughs> out how to get more entertaining, that would always be, right? More entertainment is better. Tell a little bit more always jokes, good. maybe put on a wig or something. I don't know, right? You just, there are ways to make your content more memorable, right? Mm -hmm. And the more memorable is going to be by pushing more into one of those three categories. Are you being more mm -hmm. educational? Are you being more entertaining? Are you being more empowering with the stuff? Maybe you have tools and resources you can give someone that they can walk away from this content and actually go do something with it, right? And anytime you lean into one of those three E's, you're really tipping the scale for the authority on your side, right? And that's mm -hmm. what you want. You want someone to walk away from your content going, man, not only did they get my attention, but they earned it, right? They kept it, right? Mm -hmm. They kept my attention and it was worth my time spending with them, right? And that's where right. the metaphor I like to give people is I call it the bank of goodwill, right? And so the mm -hmm. bank of goodwill, anytime you get into a sales process where you're going to ask someone to part for their money, right? You are going to be taking a withdrawal on the bank of goodwill, right? That's what a, a sale is, a withdrawal on that bank of goodwill. And so your content is when you're making deposits into the bank. Right. And so mm -hmm. if you're regularly making deposits into the bank of goodwill with someone, and so you have an, a nice, big, large, positive balance in there, when you do get to the point with someone in your sales process where you're like, hey, I think you'd be a good fit for XYZ service or XYZ product with us. Would you like to mm -hmm. buy? Right. Would you like to buy this from us? Right. However your I offer goes. Right. That withdrawal is withdrawing on a positive balance and not on a lower and negative balance. So mm -hmm. it's much easier to close sales if you've been depositing into that bank of goodwill with your content that makes them trust you with that authority building yeah. content. Does that make sense? Definitely, definitely makes sense. And I think that's a very important aspect of that to note. I'm glad you brought it up, so. <laughs> yeah, I like that metaphor for people too, because it's a, something that we all understand, right? That you go to the bank, mm -hmm. you put deposits in it, and if you're gonna make withdrawal, you gotta have a positive balance. And so right. what content is doing is it's helping you build that goodwill positive balance with your audience. So you can make offers to them and they will buy and you can make money and make profit and help them solve their problems and make the world a better place, which is, you know, the whole reason we're doing this in the first place. Yep. hundred percent. I mean, that's all I got. Yeah. And we got a short episode today, the three A's, right? Attention, awareness, yes. and authority. And I think we'll probably come back next week and talk about, we'll dive a little bit deeper into this, right? Into the three E's, right? Mm -hmm. The entertainment, empowering, and educational. We'll talk about how those tie in there. And so we'll just go right from the top on that funnel, the, the three B's, the three A's down to the three E's for how content really helps you grow your business. All righty. Well, 
thank you everybody for watching, listening, whatever you're doing. Don't forget to go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and we'll try to answer them in one of our videos. So thank you all for coming out and you're thank you, Andy. Richard. All right, bye. Thanks for joining us this week on pvp.fm. Make sure to visit our website, pvp.fm, where you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or via RSS so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on Apple Podcasts. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. And if you'd like to get help building an omnipresent content marketing strategy with a podcast and you want help, you might want to book a podcast strategy session with us at pvp.fm. Just click the book a strategy session button and book a time on our calendar. We look forward to speaking with you. And be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.